but the rear Calderay rain on the windscreen as he comes now through the exit of clearways making his way staying tight against the, uh, the, the barrier up the hill goes seventh quickest red flag so does that lap count because he the red was out possibly before he got to the timing line need to have a look at that but there is a car off at turn one two cars off at turn one well that's paddock yeah we can't see them from our comms box window but there are two cars off at paddock i understand and the red flag is therefore out and the race director calls for this stoppage just so the cars can be retrieved well there's one car just early in the exit we can see that from the commentary booth can't see the other one i think it further so there's still one car one car we believe managed to drive through the gravel there's another car uh, it's sort of before you get into the compression okay. in Paddock Hill Bend, so that's got to be attended to. And uh, that will take another 15 or so minutes, I suspect, to get everything finally cleared and tidied away. And the rain is beginning to fall again. And there's oh, the car upside, upside down. down as well. Yeah, that's not so a good sign. That's 555, isn't it? Which means Diego Menchaca has had the inversion. He's OK and out of the car, but Diego Menchaca off and very rare do you find a gt3 car upside down but he's gone through the gravel hit the tires hit the, hit the tires and the, that's flipped the yeah. car yeah but he's so okay. he's that's perfectly fine news. yep let's look again oh it goes in backwards how did he get into that situation rams it into the tower wall in reverse and uh, then the car just automatically the the forces the kinetic energy rules the car forward so damage around the rear of the car but hopefully hopefully as with the driver, no damage to the driver whatsoever, and probably a lot less than might have been the case. But that's going to take, as I say, I mentioned, maybe 15 or more minutes to get the car righted. And it's slightly awkward because all the ways that you would normally remove a car from the gravel, there's a lift point that you access through the top of the car. And now the car is upside down, there's no natural lift point. Indeed, and that also means it's out of this session and the next because of the damage. So Taylor Proto will end up starting at the back of the grid for his race, and Diego Menchaca was 16th out of the 26. Now, he is the, the one driver that needs it to rain heavily now to preserve that time. So the clock stops, of course, with being qualifying, so all of this uh, adds to the uh, time of the day, as it were. Just under 13 minutes to go, but uh, you've seen the reason for the red flag, and quite rightly, with a car inverted, there was no way the session could continue. It, just watching it there from the arty shot that we've got on board from somebody's mobile phone, they're, they're all, you know, saying, that's our car, hopefully. The driver is uninjured, the car isn't too badly damaged, and I think the car will be damaged around the back, but it hit one of those tech pro barriers which absorbed an enormous amount of the energy and that then got absorbed as the car then rotated slowly and ended up on its roof so there is the recovery vehicle its first task is to get the car in my view right before then it can be lifted and safely removed uh, back ultimately back to the team diego manchaka who has raced here before in single seaters but uh, disappointing return to brands hatch yes yeah, so he would he went backwards he was he had spun the car the car had spun maybe it occurred under braking i don't know we didn't catch it early enough to determine what was the cause but once it was going backwards i mean there's nothing you can do except sit there and basically brace yourself for what is the inevitable but fortunately those tech pro barriers were sufficiently far up that the external part of a pedicle bend that did cushion a lot of energy yeah the problem in part was the angle wasn't it here it is again he's already lost it yeah as they're on an angle, uh, and uh, he's going backwards, he acts as a ramp. And we know there was another car involved, which we've not yet identified. Let's have a look and see whether, as the car is upside down, Oops. through the gravel. Well, one of the oh, WRT geez. Audi. Yeah. Well, that, with, with a car upside down and yellow flags waving, won't go down a storm with the stewards, will no, it? No, it will not. Uh, but again, uh, one might assume that there was a sudden change. I talk about localised rain. Yeah. I mean, at, a number of racetracks and here at Brands we have seen rain falling heavily in this area of the racetrack whereas around the back of the circuit on the Grand Prix loop it was much lighter and I just wonder if there had been that little bit of localized rain on the approach up into paddock which just simply you know you I've been caught out but every racing driver at some point probably has also been caught out by that you know sudden variation in track conditions